So how do we approach these types of problems that have calorimetry involved in them? There's a lot of different types of problems. So my biggest tip is to pull out all the numbers from the problem and label them. What are they? What are they associated with? What equations can I use? Okay, and then hopefully you can kind of problem solve from there. So um, if I have one that has, you're supposed to find the specific heat of a metal. So we do this a lot of the time in order to find, sorry, we do this a lot of the time in order to identify a metal. So if I give you an unknown metal and you heat it up and you put it into cold water and you measure the temperature change, you can actually calculate the C value for that metal and then determine what kind of metal it is. Now we are going to do that in lab. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do Q equals MC delta T for the water, because we know the C value for water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And then whatever the amount of energy or heat the water gained had to have come from the metal. So the Q values are the same. So you set this equal to Q equals MC delta T for the metal. Now we can mass the metal, we can measure the temperature change for the metal also, and then calculate the C for that metal. So essentially, if we calculate that C value, we can identify that metal by looking up the specific heat of different metals. Now, if we're not doing a hot metal in cold water, you're not going to have two Q equals MC delta T's. Okay? That's the only time you're going to have two equations. Now, if I said calculate the change in enthalpy, now enthalpy is H. Delta H, H, Q, all synonymous, right? They all have to do with energy change or heat change. Um, I'll want to know what the delta e H is if I gave you a specific heat. Um, examples three and four are like this. So sometimes we ha might have to do a Q equals MC delta T to find the amount of heat transfer. And then if I'm asking for enthalpy, I'm usually going to want it in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. So you're gonna to have to calculate the heat transfer and then divide it by the number of moles that you did in order to find the delta H. So you're gonna to have to do a mole conversion there. We do this a lot of the time when we're dissolving things or if we're doing a chemical reaction with coffee cup calorimeter. Now the other type is when we use a bomb calorimeter or a calorimeter that I know the specific heat capacity of. Um, this is like example number five, or I would say calculate the change in enthalpy, kind of like I said here in B, um, but I'm giving you the heat capacity of a bomb calorimeter. It works exactly the same way. You're just going to do Q equals C, big C, delta T, and then again, put your amount of heat over your mole. So these are kind of the three types of problems that you are going to see. I am going to walk through how to do a couple of these with you. So I'm going to start with example number two. I've got a 13.8 gram sample. Now, looking at this, I'm like, that is a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of words, right? So before even reading it, I'm just going to pull out the numbers and be like, okay, what is this? What is this? What is this? So I'd be like, okay, I got a 13.8 gram sample of zinc. So this is for my zinc. That is a mass, right? Because it's a gram. So I would say the mass is 13.8 grams. Okay, is heated to 98.8 degrees Celsius. So that means before I put it in water, because this is going to be, I'm going to put it into a water and find the specific heat of zinc. That means that the starting temperature of that zinc is 98.8 degrees Celsius. So I would be like, okay, TI, that's initial, is 98.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, great. I got that number, got that number. Dropped it into an insulated cup. That tells me this is coffee cup calorimetry, right? Q equals MC delta T, containing 45 grams of water. Now, this is another mass, but this is for the water. And remember, when we put hot metal into cold water, we're going to have two Q equals MC delta T equations. So this is the mass of my zinc. I'm going to do the water over here. So the mass of the water is 45.0 grams. So that's that one at 24.9 degrees Celsius. So the water started at 24.9 degrees Celsius. After several minutes, so I let it kind of come to a stopping point, it levels off. The final temperature of zinc and water, because zinc is in the water, their final temperature total is going to be the same, is 27.1 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to be like, okay, TF of this is 27.1 degrees Celsius and TF of this is 27.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I'm saying assume that the cup, a cup is a perfect insulator. That just means that we didn't lose any to the surroundings. Now in reality, we do. And you will account for that when you do the lab. Uh, but I wanna know the specific heat of zinc. So I'm looking for the C value for zinc. What is it? I tell you the specific heat of water. So the C for water is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay, now if you wrote all of this down, you should be able to recognize that you have an M, 
you have a C and you have temperature. So we can use Q equals MC delta T. Now we have everything for water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for water. Q equals MC delta T for water. So the amount of heat is 45.0 grams times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times, well, what is my delta T? Well, I'm gonna do final minus initial. You can see that that's just a couple of degrees. It was, uh, sorry, I lost this. 27.1 minus 24.9. That is 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius. Okay, so um, if I do that, the Q value for water, so I'm going to write this like Q for water. This is how much heat the water gained, right? I put hot metal and cold water, is 413.82 joules. Again, that is gained. Oh, that's a Q, not a G. So that's how much water it gained. Now that means that is the same amount of heat that the metal lost, okay? So I would be like, well, the Q of the metal, well, it lost 413.82 joules. And now I can use that to solve for C. Now, that being said, um, there's a couple things that you wanna watch out for. First of all, you can never have a negative C value. So if you do this and you end up with a negative C value, just drop the negative, it's not a big deal. Um, the other thing is, if you're very strict about being, okay, well, delta T is final minus initial. Yes, it usually should be. So if I did this minus this, you would notice I would get a negative value for delta T. And the way that I get that negative to drop out is, well, technically the Q gained, or sorry, the water gained this, so it had a positive Q value, whereas the zinc lost it. So Q over here is 413.82 joules. Over here, I would do negative 413.82 joules. Um, and then I, then that negative would kind of go away. You are also welcome to just do for delta T, the difference between the temperatures. And so keep it positive and then just drop the negative on the Qs. That is also fine. Um, either way works for me, but I am gonna keep it as T final minus T initial to kind of show you how the negative works out. Okay, so if this gained, water gained this, that means that the Q of the zinc is it lost it. So I made it negative, it lost for 13.82 joules of energy. Um, so my delta T here is going to be negative because I do final 27.1 minus initial 98.8. And that is negative 71.7 degrees Celsius. So then I can do, okay, Q equals MC delta T for the Z. So it'd be like negative 413.82 joules equals masses 13.8 grams times C, that's what I'm looking for, times delta T, seven degrees Celsius, solve for C, and I get 0.418 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay, and like I was saying before, um, the C value for metals is usually low because it heats up really quickly or easily. Um, so they have different C values. The Q values are the same, but the temperature changes are not the same. Okay, so you're gonna do this in lab just to kind of get some practice with that. Now, the other type of coffee cup colorimetry problem I told you about was if you dissolved something or did a reaction in the water, okay? So in here, I've got 50 milliliters of a one molar hydrochloric acid and added it to 50 milliliters of a one molar sodium hydroxide. So this is an acid-base reaction. Now, all reactions technically have some type of energy change associated with them. So we can do this for just about anything that dissolves in water. Assume that the volumes are additive. That means like if when I added this to this, I get 100 milliliters, not something like a little bit smaller. The density of the solution is that of water, one gram per milliliter, and that the specific heat of the solution is also that of water. So I, it says my specific heat can be 4.18. Determine the delta H per mole of HCl. So I want delta H per mole of HCl. Now I gave you the balanced equation. This is important. Anytime you do um, some type of reaction, you have to have a balanced equation. Luckily for us, everything is one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't particularly matter in this instance. Um, and then I left this blank. I just wanted you to write it down. I do have to give you these values. The initial temperature of this reaction is 21.2 degrees Celsius, and it ended at 28.1 degrees Celsius. So when this reaction happened in water, the solution actually heated up. Okay, so before you even do anything, I want you to kind of think about this. So was this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Okay. So it's happening in this cup. If I was holding it, it would have felt warmer. 
right? So that meant that this reaction is giving off energy. So this is an exothermic reaction. So my delta H at the end needs to be negative. So think about that if you get to the end, always make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's pull all these numbers out right here. Um, I have 50 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid, 50 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide. Got a density here. I got a C value here. What am I going to do? Okay, well, um, I mix these and I'm doing a coffee cup calorimetry. I'm telling you the specific heat. So I'm going to write that one down. I know that the specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Oh, well, I see I have a specific heat. That must mean I'm using Q equals MC delta T, right? Got to be. Well, I have temperatures. Let's go ahead and find our delta T. So final minus initial, I would go 28.1 degrees Celsius minus 21.2 degrees Celsius. And so what was that? Did I write that one down? No. That is 6.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's how much that the solution when I mix these went up. All right, now the one thing I told you is when we're doing a reaction or a dissolving in the solution, you add the masses together. You can't do Q, two Q values because everything gets mixed together. So the M has to be the mass of the whole solution, which means when I added 50 milliliters to 50 milliliters and made it 100 milliliters, well, I said, assume that it's the density of water. So if one gram is the same as one milliliter, that is also 100 grams. So that is what's going in for M. So when we dissolve, you need to add them together and plug that in for M. So, okay, I have an M, I have a C, I have a delta T, great. So Q equals 100 grams times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times 6.9 degrees Celsius. I get that the heat transferred in this whole process is, let's see, I think I rounded, yes, 58,000 joules. Oh, no, that's not right. Sorry, that's the final answer. Let me erase that. This Q value is, oh, there it is, 2884.2 joules. I think that's the wrong thing writing. Okay, so is that my final answer? Well, that's the amount of energy that was transferred, okay? Now, I want to go back and see what I wanted. I wanted delta H. That's the amount of energy, but I want it per mole of HCl. So I have to figure out how many moles of HCl I used. Well, I used 50 milliliters of a one molar solution. So molarity equals moles over liters. I used a one molar solution. I don't know how many moles over, I use 50 milliliters, so 0.050 liters. That one's pretty easy. So the number of moles I use for hydrochloric acid is 0 0.050 moles. So now I have a joules and I have a moles. What did I want? I want a delta H per mole, so energy per mole. So I'm just gonna put my energy over my moles. So delta H, will equal to 88.4.2 joules over 0 0.050 moles. That is when I round with six figs, 58,000 joules per mole. Now, hang on, pause. Should this be positive or negative? We talked about this a moment ago, right? If it heated up, that means this reaction gave off energy, meaning it was exothermic. So this should actually be negative. Now, when I ask you these questions on the exam, I will probably be specific, say, include a sign. Um, now, where did I get that negative? Well, just thinking about it, it had to have been released. Now, it doesn't really play into this whole thing. If you want like the philosophy behind it, it's because well, when this reaction happened, it gave energy to the solution. So the solution sign is the opposite of the reaction sign, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay, just at the end, be like, okay, should this be negative? Should this be positive? And make sure you put the correct sign. Now, this example is another example um, where we have a solution, but this time I'm just dissolving something. So it works exactly the same as the previous example. Um, I'm going to add my 50 milliliters. Again, I told you that the density is one, so that's like 50 grams to my 4.50 grams of this. So now my mass that I use in Q equals MC delta T is 54.50. Okay, everything works the same. 
In this instance, the temperature decreased. So that must have meant that the reaction that was happening, that dissolving actually used energy, it pulled energy in from the outside because if you're holding it, it got cold. It brought in energy, so it was endothermic. So at the end down here, this one should be positive. Okay, so make sure you work through, check your work. That should be your final answer. I'm not gonna walk through that one because it's just like the other one. I've got one more that I would like to walk through with you because this one uses a bomb calorimeter or something that I have a specific heat capacity. So again, I got a bunch of numbers. I'm just gonna start pulling stuff out. All right, I got 2.200 grams of C6H4O2. Awesome. They were combusted. That means there was a chemical reaction in a calorimeter resulting in a temperature change. Oh, look at that. I got a temperature change. So it's going to be 30.57 minus 23.44. All right. So what is that temperature change? I didn't write it down again. Okay. That one is 7.13 degrees Celsius. All right. So I have a mass of stuff. I have a temperature change. If the heat capacity of the calorimeter, so that's a big C, right? Big C is 7.854 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So remember I said big C is different because the mass of the calorimeter actually doesn't matter. I don't need a mass in order to find this. Okay, so I have a big C, which means I can use Q equals big C delta T. Oh, look, I have that, I have that. I didn't even finish reading the problem. I can calculate the amount of heat transfer that there was in this reaction. So I would be like, okay, Q equals 7.854 kilojoules per degree Celsius times 7.13 degrees Celsius. Q in this case is 56.00 kilojoules. Now, what is that? This number is the amount of heat that was given off to the calorimeter when I did this combustion reaction for the sample. Okay, now let's keep going. What do we actually want to do? Determine the change in enthalpy, that's change in enthalpy, delta H. So that's what I'm looking for, for the combustion reaction in both kilojoules per gram and per mole. Okay, so that means enthalpy change per gram and per mole. Well, I found the kilojoules that happen in the whole reaction. Now I just got to do it per gram and per mole. So I just got to divide it by grams and divide it by moles. So first, I'm going to divide it by grams of the stuff I combusted. So I would be like delta H equals 56.00 kilojoules over 2.200 grams. And what is that? Okay, so that is 25.45 kilojoules per gram. Now this is a delta H. So at the end, check your sign. Well, this was combustion. Combustion is always exothermic, sorry. Okay, so this is my delta H. This was combustion. Again, combustion is always exothermic, um, but we know it heated up. Looking at this, it went from this to this. So it had to have been exothermic. So it should be negative this value. Now you do the exact same thing to find it in kilojoules per mole. So you do delta H equals 56.00 kilojoules. I just got to do it over moles. How many moles did I have? Well, I have that many grams of quinone. So what's the molar mass? Sorry, it is 108. So I would be like 108 grams per mole. So I need the moles down here. I use 0 0.02037 moles. Put that down here, 0 0.02037 moles. So delta H and per mole, again, negative because this was exothermic, negative 2749 kilojoules per mole, okay? Always check your sign at the end. If it gave off energy or it heated up, then it was exothermic, okay? So that's why I put the negative. 